Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The limit as x approaches 6 of 1 over the square root of 3x plus 7 is equal to 1 fifth. Now really, we're dealing with the limit of a function. Which function exactly? Well, notice the domain of our function is going to be all real numbers greater than negative 7 thirds. And it's defined by the formula f of x equals 1 over the square root of 3x plus 7. Right. But what does this mean? Well, by the epsilon delta definition of a limit, this means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a delta greater than 0 such that for all x in the domain of our function, if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus 6 is less than delta, then the absolute value of 1 over the square root of 3x plus 7 minus 1 fifth is less than epsilon. Now, to prove this limit, all we have to do is prove this statement. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every epsilon greater than 0, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than 0. From here, we want to find a delta greater than 0 such that this statement is true. Now, let's pretend as though we've already figured out what to choose delta to be. From here, we would want to show that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about every x in the domain of our function, let's give ourselves an arbitrary x in the domain of our function. And from here, we would want to show if this is true, then this is true. So let's suppose that this is true. And now we want to prove that this is true. So let's start out by writing the left-hand side of this inequality. The whole goal is to make this guy less than epsilon. And in the process of doing so, we're going to figure out what we should define delta to be. So to start, let's just re-express this guy in a different way. So what we're going to do first is we are going to combine these two guys into a single fraction. And to do that, for the first fraction, let's multiply both the numerator and denominator by 5. As for the second fraction, let's multiply both the numerator and denominator by the square root of 3x plus 7. So now that we have common denominators, we can combine these two fractions into a single fraction. Okay, so then what should we do from here? Well, let's actually multiply this guy by 5 plus the square root of 3x plus 7 over 5 plus the square root of 3x plus 7. Right, we essentially just took this guy and multiplied it by 1, so we're perfectly fine. And if we do this, well, in the numerator, we're really going to be doing 5 squared minus square root of 3x plus 7 squared. And that leaves us with 25 minus 3x plus 7. Now, in the denominator, notice we're basically just doing this guy times 5 plus square root of 3x plus 7. So we can distribute this guy across. We're going to be left with 25 times the square root of 3x plus 7 plus 5 times 3x plus 7. Right, so just like that. Now, in the numerator, this just simplifies down to 18 minus 3x. In the denominator, we can distribute the 5 across. We're going to be left with 15x plus 35. Now, in the numerator, we could factor out a 3, and we'd be left with 3 times 6 minus x. Okay, and now let's use a property of absolute values, which tells us that the absolute value of a fraction is equal to the absolute value of the numerator over the absolute value of the denominator. Now, another property of absolute values tells us that the absolute value of a product is equal to the product of absolute values. So really, this guy is just equal to absolute value of 3 times absolute value of 6 minus x. Further, we know that the absolute value of 3 is just equal to 3. And further, 
we know that the absolute value of 6 minus x is equal to the absolute value of x minus 6. Okay, now you might be thinking, how do we deal with the mess that we have in the denominator? Well, let's start thinking about how we should define delta. A trick we can use to define delta is to restrict delta so that delta is less than or equal to a list of positive numbers. So if we restrict delta so that delta is less than or equal to 1, well then, since absolute value of x minus 6 is less than delta, which is less than or equal to 1, that tells us that the absolute value of x minus 6 is less than 1. In the language of absolute values, this is equivalent to saying x minus 6 lies between negative 1 and positive 1. And then adding 6 to all three sides, this says that x lies between 5 and 7. So restricting delta to be less than or equal to 1, we have that x lies between 5 and 7. Well, if we look at the thing we have in the denominator, 15x must therefore be positive. So we see that all terms that we have here are positive, and therefore we're taking the absolute value of something that's positive. So we don't need the absolute values here. Further, we know that this entire thing that we have in the denominator is greater than 35. Therefore, if we take the reciprocal of both of these guys, that's going to flip the sign of the inequality. Right, so just like that. But then, since 3 is positive and absolute value of x minus 6 is positive, if we multiply this guy on both sides of this inequality, the sign of the inequality will remain the same. So, this guy must be less than this guy. And so sometimes that's the trick with these sorts of problems. We want to try to make this guy look simpler to look at. But now that we have this, we know that as the value of x minus 6 is less than delta, so this entire thing must be less than 3 delta over 35. And now, remember, the whole goal has been to make this guy less than epsilon. Well, to do that, all we have to do now is restrict delta so that delta is less than or equal to 35 over 3 epsilon. Because with this restriction, this guy is less than or equal to 3 over 35 times 35 over 3 epsilon, which is equal to epsilon. And so we have made this guy less than epsilon, which is what we wanted. All we have to do is restrict delta so that delta is less than or equal to 1 and less than or equal to 35 over 3 epsilon. In other words, we're defining delta so that delta is the smaller of 1 and 35 over 3 epsilon. And with that choice, this argument follows. And so we have proven that this statement is true, which proves that the limit is true. And so this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's Pretty much it for this video.